Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy Fitzmo TV here, aka G Lauren 33, back with another video on the channel for y'all today. And today we got a special video. Today I'm here reviewing Dragon Ball Super Broly, but I am not reviewing the movie alone. You guys might have seen these guys in the vlog. You guys have seen them on the channel before. Let me introduce two of my good friends. Um, first off, Nate Abuwe. Say what's up to the people, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Ah. And then uh. let me introduce my cousin. You guys know who he is. Stinky Breath himself. It's uh, it's good, y'all. Sweet face here. I know what Stinky Breath is, but you know, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it appropriate for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yes, we are here reviewing Dragon Ball Super Bro. We saw it tonight packed theater sold out i haven't been in a theater like that since, since that avengers theater. that avengers theater Infinity. was so packed bro there were so many people in there i just didn't i remember when i first walked in i turned and i just saw my eyes like that was crazy bro yeah. i was like what's up <laughs> yeah Man. We were forced to sit in the front bro that's so nah, I, I moved to the back because my eyes were hurting my neck was hurting. Pause. But like, I, was, I had to look up. Dude, I don't know how y'all survived. <clears throat> honestly, they were luckily recliners. That 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 that, that was a that was a godsend. They were reclining seats. So, yeah, recline your neck back. It was that yo. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah. That movie, that. So basically, the way we're gonna do this, all right? Um, we're gonna go through the movie. We're gonna discuss. You know what happened. I just want to let you guys warning if you guys haven't seen the movie yet. This does spoilers. Avoid, this does spoilers. Have spoilers. Spoilers. You better get out only of here. You don't get spoiled. <laughs> All right. So yeah, as Nate said, this does have spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled from the movie, click off the video Stop. right now. Come back and see Unsubscribe. it. Subscribe. I like the just like the video. You know, do all that if you don't want to. If they just like the video, it's gonna be because you're here. So. Oh. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, Ouch. Anyway, anyway, let's get it. So basically, the movie starts off with the past, all right? The first, like, I, I guess 15 to 20 minutes is the past. The backstory, we get the, a look into the Saiyans and their history. And we get we see King Code come to Planet Vegeta. And he basically announced that he's retiring. And the King, the Code Force is going to become the Frieza Force under the leadership of a young Frieza who was pink. I don't know why. Yeah, that that was something interesting. I noticed how they got that color differentiation or color different like differentiation like in terms of like the way he looked because the only other pink person of that race was from the Bardock movie. At least the way that I recognized it. The only, like he looked like, you know, the uh, that other member who was a Frieza's race that Bardock fought in the Bardock movie. Which was interesting. It was kind of jarring to see Frieza be a different color. But that was still pretty dope. Like, just to see him like that. Yeah, one of the cool parts about this um, was the, the scene where Frieza, you know, they, they're they um, they're showing the scouters and everything, and Frieza uses the scouter, and he, like, sees, like, the snipers. That was crazy. <clears throat> and he does, like, he, he looks like, oh, power level of, like, 200. Very, very interesting. And he just shoots them. Oh, uh, I was like, what? Bro, Frieza, I couldn't even believe it. Like, when I was looking, when we were watching it, the way Frieza was able to just snipe them and just pick them off, you didn't even see them. And it, that was just amazing how they managed to handle that, is the fact that they were just demonstrating his power right off the bat. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is how, for a while, when we looked at Saiyans, we just thought, I mean, they are bloodthirsty warriors, but, like, when you actually got to see them in the movie, they're, like, a normal civilization, like, Earth. Like, they're just normal people. Yeah, basically. Because, you know... Um, saying the reason why they were so like ruthless and you know is because Frieza and King Code forced them to go to other planets and you know take them over to sell them. Basically, the, that was what the Saiyans would do. They would go. They were basically slaves under Frieza and King Code. They would have to go to other planets, destroy the peoples and the civilization, and sell those planets to the highest bidder. That's how Frieza and King Code, you know, became so rich. Right, and basically the Saints were pawns. They were Frieza's pawns. Alright. And we see how, you know, Paragus gets jealous. Or not Paragus, King Vegeta gets jealous. He sends Broly off to another world because he's 
you know, afraid that Broly can be a danger to the entire universe. And, you know, that he's also jealous that Broly has more potential than his son, um, Vegeta the Fourth. We find out that Vegeta is the fourth. In yeah, his, his name is Vegeta the Fourth. Bro, so like, it's not just Vegeta, Vegeta, nah. So then, why'd they call him Vegeta? Um, whatever. Anyway, yeah, continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but basically, yes, so basically Paragus gets very angry with the king. He's like, why would you send him off to a planet like that that can barely be sold for any money? Um, and then basically Paragus finds out or figures out that... Um, He's jealous. Yes, that the king is jealous. And basically the king's like, say one more word and I'll have you and your son killed. All right? And then Paragus... Yeah, can we talk about that scene it. just for a second? I've never seen that much dialogue from King Vegeta since, like, the last Broly movie. Like, that that was just, like... Because we don't usually get to see King Vegeta's, like, attitude. Like, we only see him, like, you know, in the, in the first Broly movie. That was when we really got to see King Vegeta, like, you know, really have a lot of dialogue. But the fact that they had this lengthy conversation between Paragus and King Vegeta is just interesting. It, it just goes to show that Vegeta's cocky nature... It's just interesting to see Vegeta go from being not. I'm talking about Vegeta the son, not King Vegeta. Yeah. Vegeta go from being like his father at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, as we all famously understand, and then now Vegeta is nothing like his dad. And I think it's interesting because now Vegeta himself has his own son, and like I just think it's. I I think that's an interesting dynamic, and the fact that he didn't name him Vegeta, mm-hmm. Trunks Vegeta is kind of hilarious too. It's the fact like. Continue about the family line, but it's just an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I, I see what you mean there. Um, but basically, you know, you yes, you could say that King Vegeta. He not only he he was definitely jealous of Broly and his potential and all that, but you so definitely, big but, but definitely, and I'll talk about this a little bit later when we get close to the end of the movie. You know, it kind of looked like King Vegeta was right. Broly did kind of become a huge danger. Especially the planet Earth, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the review. But after this, what happens is um, we see Paragus go off to Planet Vampa with Beats. That was the name of the saying that goes with Paragus to Planet Vampa. And we see Planet Vampa. It's full of all these creatures. It's not a world that's easy to live on at all. No, it's like, scary. It, like, ugh. Imagine being on there with the spider creatures and green monsters everywhere. Like, bro, like, wow. Um, but we see that Broly was able to survive there for a couple of days. All right, because he was, he was on Planet Vampa for at least two days before Paragus finds him. And we see that Paragus figures out that Broly survived by um, turning into a great ape. Which, was, which becomes a very big thing later in the movie. All right. Because being a great ape is part of Broly's power, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I want to um, go into now the Bardock stuff. You, uh, well, really quickly, um, what do you guys think? Cause I remember when um, Paragus kills Beats, when he kills that Saiyan to save the food. That was, alright, can we just talk, bro, hold up. The fact that Paragus just shot Beats and just said, because... Just to give you guys, like, a sense of perspective on the situation, so Beats and Paragus are talking back and forth, and they're all just like, wow, we have no food, no supplies, like, we're gonna die on this planet. And Paragus looks at him and he goes, oh no, like, we're gonna find food. Like, basically tells him, wow, you're gonna become dinner, and just shoots him. And basically, we can assume that they ate him to survive until they were able to, you know, feed off of the planet, which I think was, like, 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 we just know where to put their body. So like, uh, who knows? Broly probably. I'm I'm willing to bet that Broly probably ate, um, beats his freaking bones. I was not like he, he he picked his teeth out. Yeah. But then, um, after that, it quickly transitioned to Bardock. All right, and we see Bardock coming back to Planet Vegeta, um, because the whole free the Frieza has ordered all the Saiyans to come back. And Bardock's, like, very um, curious about why, all right? And, you know, because he believes if Frieza had wanted to tell or make some kind of big announcement, he could just do it using the scouters. But Bardock definitely thinks he's planning something while all the other Saiyans are like, 
Nah, it has to be something different. Um, but we see. And how do you, I want to ask you guys, how do you guys think of Guinea? Because we see Guinea. We've never seen Guinea before. Um, the only time we've ever seen Guinea was in the um, the manga. I forget which one. Dragon Ball Minus manga. But we've never seen her animated. This is her first appearance. I absolutely I love think, her. She was uh, like, yeah. She, she, it's weird. The One thing that we're going to keep continuing to speak on is how they humanize the Saiyans. Like, Usually, we're throughout Dragon Ball Z, and like we're really like designed to believe that the Saiyans were heartless. You know, like they were a warrior race. Like, but this movie definitely took the whole idea of the Saiyan and it really like minimized it. The one thing I didn't appreciate though is that when they added Gine, unfortunately, I have to say this. This is one thing I didn't like about the movie. They added the Superman elements. Yes. Oh and God. I felt, and I it just got, it came to a point where it just got too close to the Superman origin. Like, the mom and the dad got together, you know, they're looking at Goku, telling him, oh, you know, you need to survive. And, like, when you get to planet Earth, make sure you survive. It just made it to, and the thing is, we already know that the, you know, Goku's, like, origins is just like Superman's. But the way that this movie decided to handle it made it feel too close to that. Like, and if you, when, when you watch it, you'll understand what I'm talking about in terms of, like, Bardock and Gine are putting their hands on the pod, and then they shoot Goku out into space, and that's right as Frieza's about to blow up planet. And, you know, like, it's one of those things, that was just one of my pet peeves. Yeah, because, like, there, there being is a huge line, fan. There's a line where Gine says, um, Gine says, it's not like a saying to care about their children. All right, and you know, if you watch the the first Bardock movie back in Dragon Ball Z, Bardock, the father of Goku, um, the father of Goku, Bardock, it, he didn't really care too much. About yeah, him. he is like he's like, oh, whatever, he's weak. Yeah, he's just weak, but here he cares about his son. He like risks himself, and he says, "Oh, um, if like nothing happens, I'll come to save you." Like, damn, like Bardock cares, and you know, when it it makes it so it's sad because. You know that Freeze is going to destroy the planet. We know it's about to happen. And then just seeing how Gine's crying as Goku's flying away. And Barda consoling his wife. I'm just like, damn. And like That's what I was saying earlier. They humanize the Saiyans. Yes. Like, they make the Saiyans really less hardcore in this movie. Yeah, and me and James were talking after the movie, like, how we really wish that Goku would have had some interaction. Because Goku was only was three dead. years old. He, he, could, he couldn't even talk yet. Really. And like, uh, and it makes me wish. As much as I loved seeing it, I want to see more Bardar, Gine, and Goku. I feel like there could have been more. They could have added to that, and that's one of my only gripes. I don't have too many gripes about the movie, but I feel like with the past of the backstory, there's more that they could have added. We we know that the movie was about an hour forty, and that hour forty goes by pretty quickly when you're paying attention. But Toriyama's original script was three hours, which would have been a crazy ass movie. I just that would have been. That been longer than Infinity War, exactly. bro. Exactly. Infinity War, wild. I, I just, you know, I hope somehow, someday, maybe if they do it when the TV show comes back, we'll get to see more. I, I just hope one day they bring back Bardic and Gine because I feel like there's so much they can do with those two characters. But just seeing them, in they the could film, definitely, they could find a way to be as yeah. like brought out to be alive and stuff. They definitely could. It would just have to be like. It would just be a stretch. But I could see them doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, um, one day down the line, they gather all the Dragon Balls. Goku's like, oh, I want to meet my parents. And, yeah. You know, and like, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, what did you guys say? Because this is a scene we've all seen so many times. The Frieza destroying Planet Vegeta. We've seen it in the video games. We've seen it in Dragon Ball Z. This, But we see it in a new way. It's different this time in Dragon Ball Super Bowl. And this is the new canon way. The part of the main storyline. We see Frieza destroy Planet Vegeta. And, yo, I remember I turned to Nate. I was like, we were trying not to tear up. I teared up when Bardock died. <laughs> oh! All right, there's one thing, though, that would kind of... It was definitely not quick. Yeah, like, I was just about to say, the way that they... Because usually in past Dragon Ball, like, like in the games and movies, yeah, Bardock, Bardock, Bardock was there. His speech. Yeah, like, he doesn't give his speech immediately... Yeah. It cuts to Goku being sent off. Yeah, he did, like it cuts from Goku getting sent off to literally the next shot 
is like Frieza, yeah, Frieza charging up his ball and just Bardock screaming free. The only line Bardock gets is Frieza, and then he dies. And then the planet blows up. They, it, yeah. It's sad. I just wish they added more. That's why. I yeah, mean, like, I wish. I wish they put in you know the whole thing because like it made it seem. Because I was wondering. I was right, like, right remember after the original? Bardock, you remember the original when Bardock is like attacking the the the, the army? Yeah. He's like tw- ten. He's like charging at Frieza with ten other dudes on top of him, and he's like being an absolute badass, and he gives the speech to Frieza. Like, oh my gosh. Like I wouldn't have minded this movie being over two hours. No, not at all. Like I feel like they just like left a lot. But I felt like the backstory. Yeah, and the fact that I think that they're like, okay, they've already seen this stuff so many times. But let's just like you know, bang, bang, bang. Let's keep it moving. But and pacing, we'll talk about pacing later. But that's probably the final gripe I had with this movie. It's it's pacing, but we'll get to that soon, like yeah. later. Um, anything else you want to say in the backstory before we get into the present day? Um, yeah, I think we can move into the present All day. Right. So right after, and oh my gosh, I remember, like, seeing the, um, the scouter just count down to zero as, like, the Saiyans die so quickly. It oh, was, yeah, as they all die. Oh, my, with the music, oh, man. But, like, right after it transitions quickly, we see, um, Nader was, like, it was funny, when Nappa shows up with the, Nappa had hair. Yeah, Nappa, bro, for the first time we see Nappa have hair. That was scary for me. Because I was like, oh, gosh. How far in the past are we? Because it, after the Saiyans get blown up, it takes us to Nappa, two other Saiyans, um, Vegeta and Raditz. And they say that Vegeta and Raditz were on a, they, they were on a different mission. Because they were, you know, higher class Saiyans, higher class warriors. And they are, they're interacting. And you look at Nappa and he has hair. And I didn't recognize Nappa at first until I realized his long head and his mustache. And you're like, wow, Nappa was actually young. Like, it, it, that was just cool to see. Mm-hmm. Um, they also did this uh, report. They mentioned... Wait, James, were you going to say something? Yeah, um, remember how Rats and the Gita are so ruthless when they were talking about how uh, the planet got blown up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Rats, your brother might be dead. He goes, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he he's, Just a low, he's a low he's a low level warrior. Um, they did mention Tarbo really quick. Vegeta's other brother. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the that. king um, did send him off to another planet because he's weak, but he didn't want him to die. But after that, it moves into the present. All right, moves into the present. We got Chala Head Chala. Ooh, um, that was amazing. That the infamous song. Yeah, and he did like a really quick um like um. Kind of like flashback as they show like the age, you know, how 40 years pass of Goku and Vegeta grow up. And it like, if transitions from Goku and Vegeta as kids growing up to their first fight, then into the present with them sparring. Love that part. Um, But then we get into it and then we see, you know, uh, they're talking about why do they want to keep fighting. Goku's like, oh. Determined power opened my eyes. There's so many more strong guys in the universe I haven't faced yet. So he wants to get which I liked, stronger. which I really, really liked. The fact that you know that this takes place literally right after the tournament of power, and it's a it's a great pickup. It's a great pickup to start off of because remember the, remember the way Super ended with Vegeta and Goku sparring, and this movie like the present day literally picks up with Vegeta and Goku sparring like. It's like the Tournament of Power. It kind of, the Tournament of Power literally is mentioned and it flows right in with the story. Like, there's no issue of, like, time. Like, you know that it happened right after the Tournament of Power. And what's even cooler is they flash back to remind you they flash back to the yes. different universes. Like, Goku is talking about the different universes and they flash back to, you know, universe, like, I don't even remember, but, like, I know universe... 11. Jiren's universe was in there. Universe 11 was in there. And you're like, oh! So Goku, no, like, Goku remembers Jiren, like, this is real, like, this is Dragon Ball Super, like, this is a canonical story that's happening in the t- in the timeline, which was really dope, to really feel as opposed to just hear it, because, you know, we say, oh, Dragon Ball Super Broly will be canon, but the fact, but they made you feel like, alright, this is canon, but another thing, too, is that they also make, it makes you, if you watch both of the Broly movies, you feel really weird at the beginning, in terms of how they address each other 
Because you have to understand that the old other Broly movies aren't canon. But we'll get to that sooner. Like, we'll get to that soon about how mm-hmm. the way they interact made me feel a bit weird. Because they were like, oh, I've never met you before. And that just made me feel some type of way. But we'll get to that earlier. Yeah. Um, funny, uh, um, I remember when Reese asked Vegeta why you keep training. Because Frieza. You know, because Frieza's still out there, and they're showing Frieza is going for him, and then Vegeta keeps calling Goku an idiot. Hilarious scene. Um, oh, yeah. Um, then, you know, we find out um, that Goten and Trunks. I, w- I wish we could have seen more of them in the movie, but this movie was mainly about Goku, Vegeta, Broly, and Frieza. Um, well, we see that the Frieza soldiers, they took the Dragon Balls, from Boma's laboratory, and basically that sets up the story. How the last Dragon Ball is on this Arctic continent. Um, continent, yeah. And then basically now they have to go get it before Frieza does. And then um, we find out that Boma wants to be five years younger. I'm like, huh? I'm yeah. Like, so she basically collected all the Dragon Balls to be five, bro, to be five years younger. But you know, what? and then yeah. <laughs> You, you, you and go. then you're just like what? But then it, it more jumped, It cuts to Frieza. It cuts to Frieza. Now here's the thing: the movie built it up in this specific scene that Frieza was going to do something horrendous with the Dragon Balls, and you really felt it. You're all just like, oh, word, like, oh gosh, like Frieza about to for real. He about to like trying to do something evil. So his henchman is like saying, oh, so are you going to get like immortality? And Frieza's like, no. And the guy's no. like, are you going to get, like, no damage on you? He goes, no. no. And then the guy finally asks, like, what he wants. And then Frieza says that he's going to wish to get five five millimeters taller. No centimeters. No, it was millimeters. It wasn't centimeters. It was, it was, it was millimeters. It was, it was millimeters. It was centimeters. It was millimeters. It was she centimeters. said millimeters. It was centimeters. Okay, fine. You know what? Let the people decide. But basically, he said he only knew what he wanted to grow because everyone was calling him Pipsqueak on the battlefield. Everybody was laughing when they heard that because that was like, that was ridiculous. There's no way that Frieza, the emperor of the universe, would want to. Is a midget. Is a midget, and that's what he's so insecure about. That that's what he's going to ask Shenron for. And then they ask him, well, why don't you be just in your second form? That's how tall you'd be. And it's just crazy because everyone in the theater was laughing. I was laughing. Like, George, like, we were laughing because it's like, wow, the movie really takes a turn. It takes a turn that you're just not expecting. Mm -hmm. And then um, it pans. We meet Chelai and Limo, the Frieza soldiers. Um... I love their performances in the movie. We'll get into that a little bit later. But then we meet adult Broly and an old Paragus, all right? We meet them on Planet Vampa, and we see Broly save them from this giant crab leg. And then they use their scouters, and they um, talk about Broly's power level, how they can't measure it. And it's absolutely crazy, because the way Broly's introduced, he's introduced as a beast right away. Like, he's on a mountain far away, and he just flies in and kicks the crap out of the spider. One, one kill. Um, one hit, and he and he's dead, and I I, I love that part. Um, but then we see Frieza meet Broly and Paragus. All right, and I love I kind of loved how Frieza asks Broly what's his name, and um, Broly just like ignores him, like doesn't care. But you know what was a good scene? The uh, scene where Broly eats chocolate for the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Trying to eat the rapper too. Like this dude's a. Uh... And it, 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 I like it because it does. It lets the pers- people know that Broly. You gotta remember, Broly's been on that world for forty-one years. It's been forty. The movie, the backstory takes place forty-one years, um, and so basically, Broly and Paragus were stuck on Planet Vapa for forty-one years, and so Broly, everything he knows, he was taught by Paragus. All right, so he doesn't know all these other things of society because he didn't grow up in society. He grew up on a world by himself with just his father and all these creatures. All right, I, I kind of I want to know how Broly learned English, but you know, we yes. we um there was the cafeteria scene. All right, the cafeteria scene where um Broly 
and Paragus come out after taking a shower. And one of the best things was um, Broly um, basically kicking the crap out of that soldier that was about to kick Limo's ass. Facts. Like that was a really cool scene. Um, but I and then but Paragus uses the um the remote control to control Broly and he gets like vaporized in the neck. But then Chele, being a beast, does some secret um sneaky maneuvers. She, she snags that she snags that remote right out of Paragus's like fanny pack. <laughs> Yo, I don't even know what that was, man. He was he, 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 he was on playing Vamba too long. He he forgot his fashion sense. Like his he really had a fanny pack, bro. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we 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 um I was surprised at how much we got to hear Broly speak. I really liked that because the old Broly had no personality whatsoever. Oh, he was screaming as Kakarot for real. And then we hear Broly talk about the um thing wrapped around his um pants. And which is Ba's ear, which is the ear of the monster who was his friend on Planet Vampa. I really like that part. It adds a lot of depth to Broly's character, and it shows that he's a pure-hearted guy. All right, he really doesn't want to fight. All right, it's his dad. He's a that, Goku in a way. You know, yes, yes. Like you could see the c- comparison, and you definitely see it at, at the end of the movie, which we'll get to. But you know, um, we finally get on Earth. All right, Goku and Vegeta, they reach the Arctic land, and, you know, I really like those jackets they were wearing, pretty damn fly. But, um, the scene where the Freeza oh, soldiers nice. have the seven Dragon Balls, and then they're trying to run away and freeze the, I mean, Vegeta does blasts it out of the air. Like, with, like, he just doesn't care like a savage. And then Goku just jumps on top of the, um, spaceship, and then starts yeah, breathing. Yeah, he jumps on top, and then he starts breathing, he flares his nose and starts breathing on the pod. And it's just the funniest thing, because Goku was, like, trying to be threatening, but it was just hilarious to look at, because he's like, I don't understand. Goku just is hilarious. Like, throughout this movie, Goku, Goku just was acts... Goku hilarious, man. He just acts like a dunce for a good majority of the movie, and it's it's so funny to see. And it was funny because the soldiers were scared, and Goku was trying to act serious, and he was just look, he was just acting funny, but the soldiers were, like, crapping their pants. But then, <sighs> you know, we see Frieza... You know, make his arrival. He sends like a little key blast to know everyone. I'm here, and then we see Broly and Paragus meet um, Goku and Vegeta, and right away Paragus recognizes Vegeta because he he's the spitting image of his father, King Vegeta. Only difference is Vegeta's a little um, shorter, and his father had a beard or had a goatee. But um, and this is where I was saying the way that they communicate gets weird for somebody who's either a Broly fan who or who has seen the Broly movies. You need to go into this movie understanding that these characters have never met ever before in terms of, like, as adults. Well, like, this, like... And that was kind of jarring for me because the way that they were seeing it, like, Broly was all just like, he never, like, Goku was addressing Broly and they're like, oh, who's that? Like, who's got the big power level, Right. And, like, because Goku, when they were landing, Goku was all like, oh, this can't be Frieza. Because he sensed Broly's power. And he was like, this can't be Frieza. This is someone else. And the way that, like, you know, it was just weird. Because I was like, well, damn, like, it's kind of hard to, like, understand that, wow, these characters are literally, they don't know each other like that. Like, it's not, there's no history yet. Besides the fact that Paragus has, you know, a hunch against King Vegeta and his family. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it? I don't know. Do you remember that word that Goku asks his Frieza what it is? Repugnant. Repugnant. That was hilarious. Because yeah. like Goku repungent. has the most serious face on. Like, I have one he thing goes, to ask one question. What does repugnant mean? And, yeah, and like, the theater oh. started dying. <laughs> you know, like, hilarious, man. But finally, Broly starts, you know, losing patience. All right? And Peric is like, it's time. And Frieza's like, all right, show me what you got. And then... Finally, about maybe 50 to, an, to about an hour into the film, finally, you know, Paragus gives Broly the order to attack. And Broly is unleashed. And he fires at Vegeta, alright? So first off, so let's try to break this down. Because basically the second half of the film is almost all action. Yeah, the second half the se- the whole second half of the film is literally just fighting. Like, it, like, it, 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 like, there's like, you barely have time to breathe, and it's incredible, alright? It's incredible. 
Um, but we see Broly attack Vegeta in the base form. He, but Vegeta's giving him the hands. Right, giving him the hands. And then Vegeta, you know, event Broly starts catching up a little bit. But then Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan. It was a small part. And I know Nate, you were going to talk about Vegeta looked like he turned into a Super Saiyan Green for a sec. Yeah, that's something that I'm trying to, all right. I don't know, Akira Toriyama, animators, I don't know what y'all think you're doing. That was not funny. You guys really had them flash light green. And at that moment, I'm thinking, that's Broly's color. What, 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 what's going on right now? That's Broly's color. Why is, why did Vegeta flash light green? But then the light green, you know, it turns into... Speaking of the colors in this movie, maybe it was maybe it was maybe it was like energy like. I know you want to. I know you're gonna say. I know where I'm. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. But like, I'm just gonna say the colors in this movie. The color. This movie was so vibrant with color. Yes, it was. The 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 movie was so vibrant with color. Like the color jumps out at you. Like you're just like, wow. That was so pretty. And they. And, the, and yeah, it was beautiful to look at. Like, I had seen, but, like, Vegeta, he goes into Super Saiyan God, and Yo, that when was epic. it's up that close, was epic. you so see the, that Vegeta, was, first of all, the fact that that was even a thing, the fact that Vegeta went Super Saiyan God, Vegeta, that was yeah, crazy. We've only seen Vegeta turn Super Saiyan God in the manga. This was the first time we've seen the anime with James Vegeta. Growth. Like, that's just growth right there. Like, everyone just thought, Geneva just, I mean, what the? <laughs> you, Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> I was that, but bro, their names are actually like Vegeta would just be basic and not have the fact that he got a new form is just awesome. It's because it's because um people felt like he got snuffed out of Super Saiyan three, and that's been a complaint amongst the Dragon yeah. Ball community they they for a while. Thing that they did with so Super they thought they were gonna do the thing same thing to yeah, but, but instead the, the we got man, into oh Super my god, Saiyan. so Vegeta's flying up. All right, he's flying up like dodging a bunch of Broly's key blasts. He flies up. And he closes his eyes. All right, and all of a sudden we're like, "What is he doing?" And then his aura goes away. But then it like the camera pans around his body, and all you see is like his aura turns from like it had the 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 aura for Super Saiyan God was freaking incredible. All right, it just pans around yeah, his body. That's the thing about the red. color. If you if yeah. you notice the color, is that you can see under the red aura, it's literally glistening silver, just to emulate the whole God key, which I thought was so. Cool. That's why I was kind of glad that I was so close because I got to look at every detail. Mm-hmm. Like you can see that, like it, he's literally glowing. It's like it's be- like usually Dragon Ball auras are like wow they're loud and whatever, but this was beautiful to look at. Mm-hmm. The colors were just gorgeous to look at. Like it was amazing. I love looking at them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Vegeta, and then Vegeta. Um. Okay. Vegeta turns in Super Saiyan God, which got a huge pop in the theater. Um, and it all starts, like that. he starts blasting Broly. Broly falls through mountains and mountains and mountains. Then Vegeta looked like he did like Big Bang Attack, something like that. Sends Broly into the water. All right, but then Broly it's like a shockwave. I mean, for real. And then Broly starts powering up. All right, he he recovers. Paragus is like Broly, let's retreat. But per- but Broly, you can notice and like a green um yellow aura forms around his body, and he starts losing control. All right, he starts powering up, and all of a sudden, he's catching up to Vegeta Super Saiyan God. He's not beating him, but he's catching up. He actually hits, he actually um lands a nice punch, which um puts um Vegeta through a mountain, and we're like, whoa. But then right at that moment, as um Broly's about to attack, Goku, it's Goku's turn. All right. And man, ooh, this was great. Let this not distract from the fact that one cool thing that they did was while Broly was fighting Vegeta, you went first person with Broly. That was the coolest thing I think I'd ever seen in a Dragon Ball movie ever. Because you only see them moving fast from third person, but you got to be Broly's eyes. And it was like you were beating Vegeta. That was insane. That was literally crazy, but it happened all in like two seconds. So if you blinked and you didn't pay, it, you didn't realize it. If you didn't realize it, by the time you realized it, it would have been over. For real, because then um Goku steps up and he's like, "All right, I think it's my turn to fight." All right, and they do then we like, get that scene from the trailer, the, from the, the teaser trailer, trailer from Goku the very first like trailer, warming up, and they had like a nice jumpy beat, and like in the background they're yelling Kakarot. 
and the the now it's going like Broly, and it does oh the beat, and then they do Broly first person again against Goku, all right, for a couple seconds, and Broly's whooping Goku's ass because Goku's still in base form, but then um there's a part where the the now is yelling go Broly go 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 Broly go go cat go I I love that part. Um, like the soundtrack for this movie, it got better and better as the um, movie went on. As the movie went on, Goku transforms into Super Saiyan, and the, it actually gets. Uh, we like, need to more... talk about this. We need to talk about this. All right. All right, because the damn animators gave me a heart attack in the middle of that theater, and I'll explain to you why. And I'll tell you because I was talking about the colors earlier. This needs to get talked. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you mention that, before you mention that, um, real quick, we gotta mention also. Do you remember the part where Goku does that new technique where he, like, freezes? Oh! He, oh. he freezes so, Broly, like, stops yeah. him from moving. Because Broly, one thing they did point out that Broly was getting... Well, no, but this was after. This was after. This was after. Oh, yeah. So let me say the color thing. So before we get to that, because that was insane. But basically, as Goku's changing into Super, like, as he's trying to go, I think it was God, right? I think it was God, because he was already a Super Saiyan. You see the color, you see a flash of green, you see a flash of red. Then all of a sudden, you see a flash of silver and white. Now, at that point, because that portion of silver and white was held just a little bit longer than all the other colors, because right after it, he goes blue, but then he goes back to red, and then he goes Super Saiyan God. My heart raced, because they literally showed Ultra Instinct for one split second. For a split second in the entire movie. That was the only time we ever got Ultra Instinct in the Bowling movie. And that was enough for me to want to cry. Because I was like, wow, that is ridiculous. How, how, how? I was freaking out. Like, my heart started racing. And everybody in the theater was just like, oh my gosh. Because we actually all thought that Goku was really just about to go Ultra Instinct. That would have been crazy. But when Goku does go Super Saiyan God... What happens next was so confusing. Fact. So Broly's, Broly's charging at Goku. And all of a sudden, Goku basically blood bends Broly. He holds Broly in mid- like, he I don't know, Broly so you have to explain yeah. it. He, he holds Broly. He like, um, it's, it's a move that we've seen hit through the Jiren in Dragon Ball Super. Where like basically, um, he just stops. And bro, he keeps Broly from moving because Goku's trying to, you know, calm Broly down. All right, and then he basically talks about how we've been, him and Vegeta have been living peacefully on Earth for all these years. All right, but you know, back, they face so many enemies along the way, and it, you know, shows very quickly. Frieza, Cell, Majin Buu. All right, but Goku's like, I don't think you're a bad guy. All right, and Goku can say, I can tell you're not a bad guy, but I can also tell that you don't want to fight. All right, but. You need to stop listening to what other people want to, you know, do. And everyone starts freaking out, like, Perigus and, you know, Freeze are freaking out, like, oh my gosh. Because we've seen Goku do this to so many people. He did the Piccolo, he did yeah. the Vegeta, he did the Tien. Goku just has something about him that he's able to draw people. He's able to make allies so easily. He's done that with so many characters in the series. And, you know, at this point, he looks like he's about to do it with Broly. But then, Bro it looks like Broly, you know, is able to snap out of it for a sec. But then... He goes back and he loses again and he gets angry. And then, after that, Broly, I, I turned in and he was like, Broly turns into the Hulk. Have you guys seen that famous scene from Avengers 1 where <laughs> Hulk destroys um, Loki? Broly does that, but he does it on another level to Goku. It, oh. He takes Goku and just flings him around like a, like a piece of paper. Like Frey Pinata, man, like... The thing, and Goku <laughs> like, screaming in agony. Like we seen Goku scream in pain, but he. But was, this was painful. Like, like uh, you could feel it. Goku, yeah, his outfit, his clothes are getting ripped out. Um, and his eyes, his eyes look like hey, Goku looked like he was about to die. All right, for real. Uh, and like, oh, he even takes Goku's head, smashes it against the ice, and then just tosses right. it. Most of it's because Broly and Paragus explains that Broly has you know the power of a great ape inside of him. But he's able to control it into a, a human form, which is, like, ridiculous. It's something we've never seen before. It's the power of a great ape, but he's human. So it's part of the reason why Broly can't control himself. Because great apes can't really control themselves. All right? But then we see um, Piccolo. 
Piccolo makes an appearance and he tries speaking to Goku. All right, and go and Piccolo mentions like, "Oh, it looks like you're fighting somebody, um, very powerful." And Goku's like, "Yeah." Um, Piccolo was like, and this kind of got me sad because I missed the days of Dragon Ball Z when Piccolo was a badass, you know, when he could fight. <laughs> but I kept on saying special being canon. For real. I really wish we could have seen Piccolo fight. But um, Piccolo mentioned that, oh, if I was to uh, come, I would be I a bird. And it just shows you yeah. that Goku Vegeta does so strong. Do you say something, James? Uh, uh, yeah, I, like, it's out of his league now. For real, man. Like, like uh, the Saiyan, it's all about the Saiyans now. For real, like I wish, like go on. You can say the same thing, and it just When's shows. Who's gonna come? Hey, 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 we'll talk about that near the end. Yeah, but let's like, a little bit. let's. But um, what happens then is Goku um says, "All right, Piccolo, um, if I get into a tough a tough spot and I need to go, I'll enter transmission to you, which does happen later. But we'll get to that. Goku then transforms Super Saiyan Blue, and we talked about it." The ultra instinct part already. And then we got a CGI fight. Goku then starts turning the tables on Broly. Alright. There's a funny scene where Goku's like. Bomb. They. Like Goku throws Broly into like. Kind of like this. Lava. Like equator place. And they're fighting. Like under the land. And then. Goku like bites Broly. And dragon throws him. But then right as Goku comes out. Broly does like a huge. Green spare bomb attack. And it like. Turns the arctic into this lava land yeah it takes the entire plane of ice and turns it into like a land of fire mm -hmm. and then now <laughs> goku's in full control goku's in full control all right and he's overwhelming broly in super saiyan blue but then we get a flashback frieza then remembers um how when he killed krillin how goku transformed to super saiyan so frieza asks his paragus is that all all right, and, then, and he's like, yes. And then, oh my gosh, Frieza turns Try. around. Frieza, Frieza and it's Frieza ironic. Frieza. Remember what P Paragus did the beats? Yep. It's like what goes around comes around. But here, but it's the way that it happened. Is that Frieza? You you see, you realize Frieza has learned because Frieza he has a flashback of him blowing. He has a, so basically. The fight's raging, and he he's dissatisfied with the way Broly is not elevated to that next level. And he has a flashback, and he remembers that Goku only turned Super Saiyan because he blew Krillin up. So, <laughs> this was also one of the funniest moments in the movie. But the thing is, the fact that it happened, when I, when I sit back and think about it, I realize, oh my gosh, that actually happened. But while I was watching the movie, it was so fast-paced that you laugh about it because of the way it was handled. But... Literally, Paragus, Frieza turns around and he's like, you know what? Basically what he says is, I've always seen a Saiyan is pushed to their limits. Like, they're pushed by through, something through whenever they get, through anger. So he straight up just, Emperor Beam's Paragus kills him. Just straight up, turns around and just straight up kills him. And then he turns around and he screams, Broly, look, one of the energy blasts from you guys' fight went astray and it killed your dad. And... Broly loses his everlasting mind, oh, and then he goes legendary. Right. But then you step back, and then you realize, wait a minute, they just killed Paragus. Oh my gosh! Like the transformation of Broly into a Super Saiyan, and like legit, Paragus's body just like standing there. He's just it's dead. just it's sitting there. He's just dead. He's no, dead. he doesn't even get a burial. He's just dead. All right, and then. We see, like, there's this epic choir in the background as Broly transforms into the Super Saiyan. Broly, like, rises, like, out of this, like, crater and then just, like, is elevating like he's some kind of, like, angel god or something. And then the, the theater pop because now we get to see Super Saiyan Jin Broly. All right? Broly awakens. Like, actually being legendary. And, like, oh, everything goes crazy. Like, uh, he starts firing, like, a thousand beams everywhere, like, key blasts, and, like, the whole place, like, Broly has no control over himself. But then Vegeta finally gets involved. Like, Goku, what the hell are you doing? You idiot. And then we see Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Goku team up and go against Broly. And they really can't do anything. They really can't. Broly's just that strong as a Super Saiyan. And then we see, I really love the part where we see um, Vegeta... Um, and Goku wind up the Gallic gun into the Kamamaha. 
even though it was like very fast. I, I wanted to get the wind up, you know, but it was like Gale Kamihamiha. It just shows that, that you bro. Everybody in the theater was doing the hand motion, bro. Myself oh, included. Man. Yep, love that part. And then, but it was all happening so fast. That's what I'm saying about the pacing of this movie, especially in the second half. It's moving so quickly. Like Frieza kills. Like so much happens. Frieza kills Paragus. Then literally two minutes later, Broly goes like, Broly is he goes legendary. And then literally two minutes later, you got both Goku and Vegeta fighting in Super Saiyan Blue. Like you usually in Dragon Ball, I guess it's weird because usually in Dragon Ball, fights like these in the show. Take like ten episodes, but this fight just went boom, 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 boom. like things were just going and going and going. Like the action's like nonstop. It just keeps. It's going. literally nonstop. Like from as soon as Broly starts fighting Goku and Vegeta, the action does not let up. And I wish I was bluffing, but the action does not let up until the end. Literally, it is non-stop fighting porn. <laughs> like there's no it's literally every Dragon Balls fan like just 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 fighting everywhere for a straight half hour half hour oh, to an hour it was, it was just minutes. just straight fighting nothing else I freaking loved it um oh yeah I you know what was a great part when Goku and are escaping and they're like here you go Frieza and Broly does attacks Frieza but let's not let's not Cha let this not change the fact. Oh wait, the, all right, we'll get to that. But yeah, so uh, so I'll, I'll I'll continue the synopsis. So basically, after they realize that like okay, this isn't good, Goku and Vegeta do something smart. They literally redirect because at this point, Broly he's he just targets someone and just goes after them. So Goku and Vegeta they tell they literally like speed up to Frieza and they go. They both go good luck Frieza, and then Broly's following them. So then. Goku and Vegeta instant transmission the hell out of there. So Frieza's left to fight Broly. So they instant transmission and they go to Piccolo, where Piccolo is. <laughs> and we get such a huge callback to Dragon Ball Z in the front rows. <laughs> oh, I loved it. You know, so basically, Goku asks Vegeta, oh, do you know how to fuse? And Vegeta's like, I'm not doing that stupid dance that Trunks and Goten do. All right, I'd rather die. And then, you know, Goku pulls the ultimate trump card. He's like, so you're just going to let Boma and your newborn daughter, Bula, die? Just like that. And Vegeta blushes. And he's like, damn, why you had to bring that up? All right. And then we get the funny-ass scene. All right. So Vegeta and, so Vegeta, I mean, not Vegeta. Um, Goku and Piccolo do the fusion. They show the the fusion pose, and you just look at Piccolo. The first face. time, the Piccolo's first time so their funny. fingers didn't touch. And then Goku and Vegeta do the fusion thing. pose, and then I, um, Vegeta's finger didn't touch Goku's correctly. They turn into Fat Veku. All right, call back, <laughs> call back the fusion reborn. So then they have to try again in thirty minutes. Meanwhile, Freeze is getting his ass kicked. All right. Frieza transforms <laughs> into Golden Frieza. He he gets. It doesn't do anything. He's nothing. Still getting, at that all. means, bro. It took them an hour just to do that, bro. <laughs> that means Frieza was getting his. Frieza ass was Loki helping them because. But like, Frieza was getting his. Ass think about it. But think about it. Frieza didn't know where Goku and Vegeta were. He didn't even know they were fusing. So like, yeah, he just was getting beat up. I, I gotta give credit to credit due. Frieza, man, he can take a lot because he got his ass kicked by Broly for an hour. Like, legit. Like, the fact that Vig uh, Frieza survived all that, man, like, he has a huge tolerance level. Like, my gosh. But, um, the second time they do the fusion, they fail again. They, then we get Skinny Vecu. And then the third time, third time's the charm, we get successfully Gogeta. Gogeta but before he leaves. <laughs> oh, yeah, the naming part. They tried, so they say, all right, first we need a name. Piccolo's like, all right, you idiots need to get the hell out of here and go fight Broly. Oh, so but they're like, working. but they go, no, we need a name. One of the names is like Gojeku, and then he's all like, no, how about Gogeta? Yeah, we'll be called Gogeta. So they, and they, it's a transmission, gone. Oh, I love, now, I love this part. We need, to, we need to say this. The fight between Broly and Gogeta is probably the, it tops the fight between Goku and Jiren. I'm sorry, 
I am sorry. The fight that happened between Broly and Gogeta tops Jiren versus before Goku Ultra Instinct. Before we get to that fight, all right, because that fight's a blur because of how it's like <laughs> everything is like so crazy. So what happened when Gogeta gets there? Remember, there was two things that happened. All right, one, where Frieza like Frieza sees Gogeta for the first time, and he's like, "Hey, who are you?" All right, and Gogeta's like, "Yeah, this is Fusion." All right, you've been dead so long that you wouldn't know. And then Frieza's like, no fair. All right. That was funny. And then we see Broly versus Whis. And Whis is just toying with him. Yeah, that's one thing too. Since we since we already established that Broly was fighting anything, so Frieza must have put the pressure on Whis. But just to give you an idea of how powerful Whis is, Whis is literally just dodging and laughing. He's like, this is, it just shows how strong, like, legit. When we first go back to the beginning of Dragon Ball Super, and Goku and Vegeta are training with Whis for the first time. They're not able to touch him. And after all this, after facing Hit, Goku Black, Zamasu, Jiren, and now Broly, all this, there's, this is so that Whis is still that strong, where they can't touch him. Whis is just toying with Broly. It's like, oh my god. Whis, Whis, seems, Whis seems only slightly entertained. Like, he's just real. moving he's around just like, like, he... like, oh man. But then, yes, now for the part you've been wanting. Gogeta versus Broly. Absolutely wild. That wow. that fight was so much. Like, There's so it's much a, that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good fight. It's like about six, seven minutes long. All right? But it, it's like, it is so fast paced. So what happens is, um, Gogeta starts off in his base form. And then the music in the back going, Gogeta. Bro, Gogeta, and like, oh, and Gogeta transformed into a Super Saiyan, and he does this move where he just fires like a thousand key blasts, just flying at Bro. It looked like he fired multiple command mail waves at once. For real, and they're all. That's what I thought. The, which I thought was crazy, the fact that he did that. Yeah. Like. And then mm. um, Gogeta in his Super Saiyan form is kind of on par. With Super Saiyan Broly. But then, Gogeta and Broly are going so hard that they break the dimensions. Like, um... That first... That dimension. was that was crazy. They punched each other's fists and they literally shattered reality. That is the reality. first time we've seen something like that in Dragon Ball. Like, that shows Since the Broly. last time we ever saw two beings I think nearly Goku break reality, it was Goku and Beerus. Yes. Like, but these two, like, they went into another dimension. Like, it looked like a massive literally. universe. It looked they like literally crazy. went to another dimension. Legit. And then we see Broly transform into his full power Super Saiyan form. and go like, like the classic shirtless Broly. Like, yeah. he didn't have his shirt. And then, like, um, Bro, um, Gogeta's like, okay, you're going to transform. I'm going to transform into Super Saiyan Blue. All right? And from there, Gogeta just owns Broly for the next, like, five minutes. All right. And, and I think what needs to be noted is, I told George this in the theater, the Super Saiyan Blue that Gogeta has, I, we thought was dry, was Super Saiyan Blue evolution, because it wasn't it wasn't the regular light blue. It was a darker blue Gogeta. Like it looked royal blue. The aura looked royal blue. But I could be wrong. But I was just noticing like the color, the blue. I don't think, I don't think it's that deep. I'm I don't know. I don't know because the blue that I saw was very is darker than regular Super Saiyan blue. It was def in the movie. It definitely was darker. If you even look at the poster, it's a darker kind of blue. It's it, it's definitely. I mean, it maybe could be because you know I think it was fused, normal Super so. Saiyan blue, but you never know. Never know. Um, but then after that, all right, when we get they finally get back. Um, because so much is happening. Gogeta's just firing key blasts at Broly left and right. Um, Broly's fighting back. And, you know, we... Oh, Gogeta does the Soul Punisher. Oh, my gosh. The Soul Punisher from um, the move that he did to defeat Janemba. Oh, it was so good to see that movie. I was waiting for that, to be honest. And that movie was freaking hype. All right. Um, but then we, we go back to... Um, back to Earth. They finally get back into the normal dimension. And Bro Broly still has a lot in him. Alright. But then Gogeta. He's just throwing jabs left and right. Body um, body jabs everywhere. And then Chen Lei and Limo. They get the Dragon Balls. Alright. They get the Dragon Balls. And they're like. Alright. We're going to save Broly. Because it's not fair. For him. It's not fair for someone that had, that was forced to stay on Planet Vapa his whole life. His whole life. And you know. Just because his father wanted to get revenge. You know, it's not fair for Broly's life to end like this. 
which we I think we all agree. So they get the Dragon Balls. And yeah. They basically take um one of Frieza's um high ranking officers hostage. They're like teach us how to use the Dragon Balls, and they summon Shenron. All right, and just as it looks like Gogeta got everything done, he f- loads up full power Kamamaha. All right, full and oh man, love the build up to it, cause it looked like Gogeta um was gonna kill Broly. There was like no way Broly was gonna survive that. I think that yeah, like I think that was probably more Vegeta than Goku, because I think Goku wanted Broly to survive. But if he had to die, it so be it. But that that combo was gonna kill Broly. But right at the last second, Chele um wishes for Broly to be saved and transported back to the planet where he came from. And at the last second, right as the combo was about to hit, we see um Broly transported quickly back to his home planet. And then Chelly and Limo they steal the spaceship and they, they decide, okay, we're gonna go um we're gonna go off the planet Vapa. Alright. And they, they get food and stuff on the way. And that's basically how the the battle ends. Gogeta's kinda of smiling because he's like, Okay, like our earth is protected and Broly's not dead. But then right as you know Chelly and Limo are leaving, Frieza gets back up and he's about to fire a death beam to kill them. Gogeta stops him. And then, right at that moment, people, I remember people yelling in the theater like, why don't you just kill Frieza right then and there? Like, and they done it. Vegeta, at the beginning of the film, is like, I wanted to defeat Frieza. Just because you guys let him, you could have easily killed Frieza right then and there. I don't know why they didn't do it. Um, but then Frieza's like, one day, I will get my payback on you two, and this planet will be mine. Alright, and Frieza leaves. And then basically, we're entering into the final, you know, moments of the movie. Frieza's attacking another planet. Three days have passed. And Frieza's plan is, what basically his plan is, he he knows that Limo and Chele are now with Broly. But for now, he's deciding he's going to leave them alone. Because he wants Broly to control himself. And he's like, one day I can use Broly to be my own soldier. Even though I don't think that's going to happen. Especially with what happens at the end. Um. Um. And then we go on to Planet Vapa, and we see Chimo and Le- um, Ch- um, Limo and Chele talking to Broly. All right, and all of a sudden, Son Goku appears. All right, he literally was, out right, of nowhere using instant transmission. And then basically, he's talking to Chimo and Lele, who Limo and Le- Chele. I don't know why I keep messing that up. Um, but he basically he's talking to them, and they don't trust Goku. They're like. You were just fine, Broly. What are you doing here? Are you here to take us out? And Goku's like, no, I don't want to do that at all. Uh, basically, what he does is he brings out a capsule um, house. And he also brings out sensu beans. Basically, a bunch of stuff to help Broly survive. And um, what was the word? Oh, repugnant. Repugnant. And, bro- and Goku says it correctly. All right. And basically, they give him all, a bunch of food, a bunch of supplies, so it's easier for Broly to be able to live on this planet. All right. Uh, and then um, Limo and Chele are like, they're suspicious, like, why are you doing all this? And Goku, being himself, he's like, I just want you to survive and be healthy. All right. Especially, he's like, Goku, and th- this part shocked everybody. Goku's like, you know, I, I thought I was reaching my limit. I didn't know how much stronger I could get. But then he, um, but then, then he met Broly. And then he met Broly. That's and, Broly what he said. and Goku admits Broly's stronger than him. So now think about it. Goku without Ultra Instinct. Because Goku, he still has a master Ultra Instinct all the way. He can't do it whenever he wants. Jiren's still stronger than him. All right. And Broly. So now Goku has more motivation than ever to keep training. Plus, there's the warriors from the other universes, which Goku has not faced. And don't forget Moro. And don't forget Moro from the next arc. And so basically now, they they set up the motivation. Frieza, all right, Frieza wants, because, you know, he knows that Goku and Vegeta, they keep getting stronger. Frieza wants to have a partner, um, so the, and at least it can be an even two-on-two fight. Because Frieza says, no matter how much stronger I get, Goku and Vegeta will just keep getting stronger and stronger. And now they have Gogeta and all this other stuff. So it's going to be interesting when Dragon Ball Super comes back, you know, how that works out. But um, basically the movie ends, and I love this ending. Loved it. All right, I'm going to explain to you guys why. Um, but, you know, Goku, Goku um, basically as he's leaving, they ask Goku, what's his name? And he goes like, Son Goku. 
But Broly, you could call me Kakarot. I marked out so hard. Nate, what, what was your he, thoughts? There's that? a reason why. That I think, because, all right, in order to explain why George got excited, the reason why is because if you remember from the Broly movies, and if you remember from Xenobert, bro, any Dragon Ball media that has to do with Broly, the one name Broly would spam would be Kakarot. Kakarot, Kakarot, Kakarot! But the thing is, not, not once, not a single time did Broly ever say the name Kakarot. Nope. Until Goku said, I, my name is Goku. But Broly, he says, but calls out Broly specifically, he goes, Broly, you can call me Kakarot. Which was a huge callback to the Broly movies, which was such big fan service. To the point where I just, I lost my mind. I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. I was just like, oh my gosh. And we were leaving and George hit, and George, he, he, he told us in the theater, or when we were eating, because we went out to Wendy's after, he told us, he said, straight up, he said, guys, that's why at the end, Goku said what he said, which was awesome, which was dope. Real, okay, oh, that was in, dope that, that is said. great storytelling right there. Great story. I don't care what anybody says. Absolutely incredible. The fact that a lot of people complained about Kak um the fact that Broly was always yelling Kakarot. But now he you know, Goku gives him a reason to say his name at the end of the movie. And first of all, this is the first time the first time that Goku has ever called himself Kakarot. And all the times, remember back in Dragon Ball Z when Raja says Kakarot, Kakarot. who's Kakarot? Alright, who's Kakarot? My <laughs> name is Goku I'm not Kakarot. My name's my name is Goku and I'm from Earth. All right. The only person that Goku would ever let call him Kakarot was Vegeta. All right. But now he's letting another. So this is like Goku accepting his Saiyan pride. All right. Now he's letting other people call him Kakarot. Absolutely. Ab great scene. Great way to end the movie. And then I remember the credits come. And everyone's um, giving an applaud. Oh, awesome way to end the movie. Um, really quick before we get into our final thoughts. James, Nate, give me your thoughts on the movie. Give me a give me a rank out of five stars. Eight point five out of ten. Out of ten, nigga, I'm giving that a nine out of ten. Eight point five out of ten. I'm giving it a nine out of ten. I'm giving it out of two reasons because no, he about to say Naruto is better. Oh my, be yeah, he about to say something about Naruto. He about to say something about Naruto. Two reasons. Number one, because I feel like at times he kind of rushed a little bit. And two, because Goku didn't get to see his dad or talk to him. I don't hope for uh, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Obviously, this is the best Dragon Ball movie to date. That's on this not question. It's just my reasoning is that for me, um, a bit too fast paced. And the beginning was a bit too much like Superman. Like. But other than that, I love this movie. This movie was amazing. If you haven't seen this movie yet, go get your friends. Go watch this movie, right? Like, it's only premiering this weekend. So I don't know what you think you're going to do, but remove all plans. Because when we went to the theater tonight, it was huge. It was packed. It was an event. Everyone was active. It was crazy, bro. So go take your friends. Go see this movie. You will not regret it. For real, man. For real. Um... Loved it. The thing, the only thing I gotta say, all right, it was a great movie, best Dragon Ball movie of all time. Only real gripes is I wish it was a little bit longer because the time went flying by, so quickly. yeah. That's why I said pacing. And I, I feel like they could have done a little bit more with the backstory. All right, the action was incredible. The animation was incredible. All right, yeah. uh, it's mostly the only problems I have is the pacing and some of the backstory. I feel like they could have done a better job explaining some things. Um. But other than that, this movie was freaking incredible. Like, there's really no words to describe. If like, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you need old to see or this movie, new. Period. Like, this is a period. perfect old or new movie period. for new um, Dragon Ball fans. Old Dragon Ball fans will love it as well. It has all the like the elements of old Dragon Ball Z. It's it's not a perfect movie, but it, it's it's great. It lived up to the hype. I I agree with James. I I'm still waiting for Goku and Bardock to have that conversation. All right, like bring Bardock and Gine Black. Please, all right. Definitely, we know Dragon Ball Super is going to be coming back on the air, probably most likely in either April or July. Definitely, probably going to be either the moral arc, which they're doing in the manga right now, or it could be something completely new. 
So we know Akira Toriyama is still working on stuff. But, you know, under that, any final thoughts, guys, before we get out of here? It's pretty much it for me. I mean, yeah, just my final, just go out, go see it. If you don't, you're not a true Dragon Ball fan. That's facts. Yes. Like, like I, I, I can't. There's no way you can be a real Dragon Ball fan and not watch this movie because this movie is literally everything you want out of Dragon Ball. This in is one. the movie you want to see in theaters. All right, and remember, yep. it's only in theaters till I think January twenty fourth. So, go see it, go see it. But other than that, guys, that's all about. Um, that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you guys for coming through to the review. Make sure to follow Nate and James on social media. You wanted to plug your social medias real quick. Yeah, Agent. JXM, Instagram, Twitter, you know, um, Twitter at Nate Arboy, A R B O U E T, all lowercase, no spaces. You know where to go. You know what's the move. Yep. I don't think we do. <laughs> I'll, I'll hurt you. <laughs> but um, other than that, you guys know me. You guys are new to the channel. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this with all your friends, all that. And you guys know all my social media is down in the description down below. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank for Nate and um, AJ JXM for joining me on this review tonight. Hope you guys have a great night. Hope you guys enjoyed the movie. Tell me guys what you guys think. Other than that, have a great day, guys. Peace.